So hello everybody. So today you're not you. Congratulations, you're all parents. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news is that you have a child or children that are in a heart healthy program at a hospital um, for children. And you all um, have kids who have either um, heart issues already or are at risk for heart issues, as well as for other um, major health issues like diabetes and pain leading to met metabolic syndrome. So today's presentation is called Snack Attack, and it's to Im help empower you as parents to feel better about buying snacks. And specifically, we're going to talk today about choosing better crackers. So why should you care about crackers? Well, first, a lot of you are here because whether you like it or not, your kids aren't eating vegetables, as we've talked about in some of our past se sessions. And vegetables are sometimes hard to provide as snacks in the first place. You know, there's baby carrots and things like that, but sometimes it just gets boring. Even I don't like eating just baby carrots and other little snacks like that. But kids eat crackers in general. They like them. There's lots of different kinds of crackers. And so when it comes to making an informed decision about crackers, there's two things that I want you to think about. Focusing on the fiber in the crackers, as well as pairing those crackers with some sort of protein. And so again, today's goal is to really empower you as parents to make better choices. So first to start, we're gonna focus on the fiber. And you've had um, one of our other dietitians speak to you about fiber in the past, and then a lot of the one-on-one -on -one counseling that you've received here with your children, we've talked about the benefits of fiber, that it comes from fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. So with crackers, we're gonna be talking about whole grains. And really, one of the just not so much scientific benefits is that crackers and if they have enough fiber can be a really filling snack for your kids which is kind of what you want if you if you have um, you know a kid coming home from school and they're hungry maybe you're like oh well I don't want to fill up my kid before dinner because I want them to eat dinner but maybe they're not eating what you're providing a lot of you have you know discussed that with us when you're providing, trying to provide healthier things, and the kids are just not going for it. So maybe it's time to kind of work in some secret snacks that might be better for them. So again, as you've already learned in the past, um, fiber can help lower cholesterol, can control uh, blood sugar spikes, and really uh, you want to avoid snack attacks of kind of just empty calories, things without fiber, because that can just be really bad for your kid and bad for you as adults as well. And so you may, may have seen packaging like from Whole Grains Council or for any just packaging in general that says, you know, look for whole grains, eat whole grains, but I don't even want you to look at that. Like don't ever trust packaging. Always go to the back, read the nutrition label on the back and kind of near the bottom you'll see total carbohydrate and right under that is the amount of fiber that you would have in that item. So read the label. So let's play a game. So here's regular goldfish crackers and whole grain goldfish. Who thinks, raise your hand, if you think the whole grain goldfish has more fiber than the original goldfish? So it's true. The whole grain does have more fiber. But you're starting with something that has less than one gram of fiber. And by it doesn't have a lot of fiber in the first place you know, in its non-whole grain form. So when it's made with whole grains, it's not really gonna increase that much. And a serving size of goldfish is 55 goldfish. So unless your kid is really shoveling down the goldfish, but it's a possibility, we all do it sometimes. <laughs> uh, you're still, you're just getting a lot of empty calories and not really any fiber. So is buying whole grain goldfish really a better choice? Not, not really. And you're not gonna count out 55 crackers. <laughs> so let's do some yeah. more. <laughs> so here's one cup of kale or six Triscuit crackers. Raise your hand if you think the kale has more fiber than the six Triscuits. Okay, so this was a trick too. They're about the same. <laughs> so a lot of kids aren't eating vegetables, but maybe you're like, okay, well, six Triscuit crackers, and you can see our sample today is two Triscuit crackers and some hummus, and you can enjoy those if you'd like. If you have a wheat allergy or a hummus allergy, it's <laughs> red, red pepper hummus. Um, maybe you share it with one of your neighbors. 
So fiber isn't the only thing we want to care about. Like I said, the other thing with crackers is you need to pair them with a protein. So protein can also help you feel full. And eating mixed um, food group meals or snacks is just all around better for you, for digestion and um, just helping your kid grow. Uh, just overall uh, satiety and satisfaction when your kid eats that snack. And so you can ask yourselves, you know, what's a better snack? You know, 55 crackers, 55 little goldfish, you can't really put toppings on them, you can't really dip them in anything, they're cheesy, they might taste good. Or easier for parents to do, six Triscuits, you can count them, they're right there, and you can put whatever kind of toppings on them that you like. And so always try and pair crackers with a protein. So some options today, like I said, you have hummus, you also have a string cheese by you. And so some of the doctors in our program may have talked to you and your kids. If your kid has hypertension or some high triglycerides, and maybe you, you're wary of cheese. Um, but cheese in general is, you know, is pretty good. If, they, if your doctor's told you to stay away from it, buy a low-fat cheese. There's lots of options now, low-fat, low-sodium cheeses, where before you couldn't really get that and hummus, peanut butter, almond butter, and of course what's missing here is meats. If you want to put you know, some turkey meat on there, um, but processed lunch meats, again, have a lot of salt in them. So it's really up to you know, what your doctor has told you with your kids. You know, do, should they be watching their salt? So remember, whole grain, as you saw with the goldfish, doesn't necessarily mean high fiber. So never trust packaging, even if, it's, even if it's from Whole Grain Council, just look at the label, go straight to the label. And already if you have crackers that are higher in fiber, those tend to be kind of more health conscientious, conscientious companies in the first place. Those crackers tend to have lower sodium and lower fat already. So there's a handout in front of you, it's Snack Attack, Choosing Better Crackers, and you'll see it's a, what we call a go slow roll handout. So things in the go column tend to have higher fiber and lower salt and fat. Things in the slow column are kind of right about in the middle. And those are things you could enjoy like maybe a little less frequently with your kids. And the woe column are brands of crackers you really just kind of should lay off, especially in, you know, you don't want it to be every day. So those could be, you know, a, a sometimes food or a special treat. And there's just some images there to inspire you. You don't have to get perfect and artistic, but you can include vegetables and fruits with these as well. And as this image shows here, maybe your kid's not eating slices of whole tomato on a salad, but you could maybe sneak some on a cracker with some cheese and kind of wean them into it. So that's all we have for today. And I hope you've learned some more about choosing better crackers and focusing on fiber and pairing with protein. So happy stacking with your kids. Mm -hmm.